Hi, my name is Serena, and I'm from the FLL team, Just Team Pi, and I'm collaborating with the Gummy Bears Robotics to share my knowledge on designing an FLL-based robot. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what an FLL robot looks like, the FLL robot design requirements, basic spike prime parts for the FLL robots, engineering design process for FLL robots, and building instructions at the end. What does an FLL robot look like? On the top, you can see some examples of smaller designs, such as the one that you'll be building later. And on the bottom, you can see more advanced boxy designs. And the top left design is the design you'll be building after this video, and I have provided step-by-step -step instructions in the description, but before you build, I would strongly recommend watching the rest of the video to understand how the robot works. What does an FLL robot look like? So you have wheels, attachment motors, a hub, and some wires or cords. You also have a ball caster, perhaps, and color sensors. And don't worry if you don't understand anything I'm talking about right now. We'll get into that in later slides. All right, these are some FLL robot design requirements. So all of the equipment must be Lego building pieces and in original factory condition. And teams may use as many non-electric Lego pieces from any set as they like, but there are limits on the electric pieces, such as you can only have one hub in each match, a maximum of four motors in each match, and only touch, force, color, and ultrasonic sensors. The electric Lego equipment is allowed only as shown below, so you can only use these types of equipment. These are some basic spike prime parts for FLO robots, which are just basically Lego Technic parts. And there are beams that can be bent, pins, flat panels, frames, axles, axle connectors, cross blocks and beams, and wheels that you can use to build an FLO robot. These are some spike prime parts for FLO robots. There's the hub, also known as the brain, that runs codes, controls motors, and sensors. It has a built-in gyro sensor that measures robot orientation and rotation, which includes pitch, yaw, and roll. You can use it to detect how many degrees your robot turns. The big motor has higher power and it's often used with wheels, and the small motor has lower power and it's good for lifting arms. The color sensor senses color and light. It could align to black lines on the game mat so the robot doesn't get lost. And the touch sensor detects a button press. We didn't use this on our robot, but it's fun to play with. You can tell the robot to start screaming when you press the button. All sensors are like road signs on a highway. They help your robot know where to go. This is the engineering design process for FLO robots. So you'd start at identify. So you'll find references and characteristics to include in your design, and then start designing where you'd make drawings or online models. Then you'd create and build a physical prototype or maybe multiple physical prototypes. And then you'd iterate to improve your prototype and communicate, which means to share and present your robot. This is the base robot design that I made. So I included two wheels on the front so that there's backward drive and two front color sensors, two attachment motors on the top, and a hub. I did some research and found inspiration from Prime Lessons website and I found a pre-made robot design with instructions and modified it to fit my needs. So this is the drivetrain of the FLL base robot. This includes the wheels, a support structure that can connect to the motors and the motors that control the wheels, which are large motors. The wheels have a two inch diameter and the entire structure has a 5.5 inch track and a 3.5 inch wheelbase. So this is the chassis of the base robot. There's a wire storage, beams in the front and frames on the side to connect to the main robot. 
There's a ball caster on the bottom and two color sensors, one on each side. There are also wheels, gears, small motors, big motors, and wire clips. So this is the brain and wirings of the FLO base robot. So you have wire clips, the wires that are plugged into the hub here, and the hub. And this is an example diagram of a wiring scheme that you guys don't have to follow. It's just an example. So you have the left attachment on attached to A, the left wheel attached to C, the right wheel on E, and so on. Some wiring principles is that the wiring should be tight and neat, and it shouldn't block anything else. The wiring scheme should be pretty simple, and you need to make sure everyone on the team knows the scheme. And if you don't test a change that you've made to the wiring scheme, then you shouldn't change it. This is the test drive for our FLL-based robot. So things that went well, the robot was structurally stable. The hub buttons were easy to access, so no wires were blocking anything. All motors and sensors were working well and the drivetrain navigates well with the ball caster because the turns are easier. Also, attachments could fit easily onto the gears on the front of the robot. These are some further improvements I made to my FLL base robot. So there were a few problems from the test drive. The wires were getting in the way of the wheels and dragging, so the robot was tripping. And the hub was a bit wobbly. The robot was really confused without its brain. So I made improvements to solve the problems. I had better wiring management so the robot doesn't trip over itself. And I tried fastening the hub so the robot isn't confused anymore. So these are the final evaluations of my FLL base robot. The pros, the good things, are that the robot is compact, stable, it includes color sensors, which can be really helpful in competition, and it's easy to add attachments. The cons or things we need to improve is that the back and sides aren't flat. Could you improve the robot so that the back and sides are flat? Let us know how it goes. So these are the building instructions. The top link is the Droidbot M instructions, which is the design I referenced from Prime Lessons. And the bottom link is my modified designs instructions, which will be linked in the description. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach us through our email written on the slide.